Another study flagging the potential impact of implementing a basic income grant. The new IntelliDex report was commissioned by Business Unity South Africa and Business Leadership South Africa. It says the implementation of the grant would slow economic growth and may lead to the immigration of those heavily taxed. Peter Tartman-Talto from IntelliDex joins me now. Peter, thanks very much for your time. If anything, I would imagine this study has revealed one thing, the fact that funding for a potential basic income grant can't come from borrowing, can it? It has to emerge from tax revenue, and therein lies the challenge. Good afternoon. Well, the report basically wanted to lay out the fact that if for political reasons say you are going to go ahead with the basic income grant, uh, what are your choices and how do you go about doing it and what are the implications as opposed to trying to take an alternative view of saying is it the right thing etc to do uh, mm -hmm. there is no argument with the fact that giving people money is going to improve their quality uh, of life the issue really is the behavioral uh, and the economic impact uh, of how you fund it so you can do it for cutting out of expenditure but really there is no fat left to cut elsewhere uh, you could raise debt and we actually outlined some scenarios uh, around debt financing which would see debt GDP rise uh, in the space of a couple of years um, by over 20 percent, 20 points of GDP, uh, but that it wouldn't be saying we're not on a sustainable path around borrowing already. So tax is really your only option. Uh, we consider a number of different scenarios of raising 50 billion, which is roughly what it costs at the moment. But actually, you know, most of the proponents for a basic income grant are talking about something way, way bigger than that. So the headlines you've seen on higher VAT, et cetera, that's actually off a very low um, uh, total cost of a basic income grant. The 300 uh, billion odd uh, numbers would see VAT uh, well over 20 percent uh, in order to fund it through that route. And, and as you say, you've done that. You've broken down in the report some of the most feasible uh, ways in which you could uh, find this funding. But then, you know, fiddling with the VAT, even then, you've got to be cautious. And as you say, it just depends on what amount you're going to finally gather. It, it, but, but that is a reality. We could very well see that increase if you want to approach this in a particular manner. Well, this is the thing. To, uh, to actually make this work, given the behavioral and uh, growth impacts that changing uh, tax policy would have and that the proponents of a basic income grant ignore, they simply just stack up different bits of spending, of tax mm -hmm. rather, tax policy, uh, to make the figures add up. We have to consider the behavioral impacts. Uh, you're going to have to over tighten in various areas. You're going to have to hike VAT a little bit more than the headline numbers would suggest. The same on um, uh, corporate uh, tax, given profitability is very low. The same on personal tax, given you're actually taxing a relatively small number of people. Those behavioral impacts uh, can be very large. And that's where the, uh, some of the headlines around immigration have, have come from. Uh, you can't assume that implying a, a wealth tax, et cetera, uh, is simply going to lead to no reaction by the people uh, that you're taxing. Now, there are, there's a morality argument if that's right or wrong, but I think that's just the fact uh, of how things work around, around tax. And we're seeing that, of course, a number of people offshoring uh, their tax affairs already uh, in, the, in the last couple of years since it was made easier um, by, uh, by Treasury. So um, this, this report is not meant to say, you know, is a basic income grant necessarily right or wrong? It's meant to mm. say uh, these are ultimately your relatively uh, limited menu of options to actually finance it. Having said that, let's remember that there's another election fast approaching, and no doubt policymakers will have to consider the politics about this. And I think you've alluded to that in the report as well. Indeed. And there's the politics of uh, revenue as much as there is the politics of, of spending. Uh, you know, uh, hiking uh, corporate income tax may sound great, but it's actually a relatively small tax base considering the amount of uh, profitability there is in the, in the economy as, as seen by. Uh, as seen by SARS, um, the current uh, you know, figures around uh, mining tax, et cetera, are not sustainable uh, in the long term. Uh, we saw the politics of VAT hikes in the past, of course, when that happened, we had to see a rowing back of, of that through more uh, zero rated goods, et cetera, a big delay of the implementation of that previous um, VAT uh, hike. Uh, and to really make a personal income tax hike work, you're going to actually have to hike uh, taxes relatively far down into the income uh, distribution actually down well into the middle classes actually to make it work. There simply aren't enough people uh, with enough earned uh, income to make uh, uh, to make it work. Just targeting uh, the very uh, top income decile. So there are huge politics around uh, around revenue. 
Um, but as you say, the politics around expenditure is why we think this is interesting to talk about now, because it is definitely uh, on the table uh, for discussion and, and for debate. And we've seen that uh, repeatedly from the government uh, in the last, uh, last year or more. We've, we've seen headlines, in fact, a bit more frequent these days than they were a couple of years ago on immigration and the sort of push factors that are related to immigration. And again, it surfaces here if, uh, he, you know, the South African that's due to immigrate feels that they are overly taxed. But it is a consequence and it's a real one, isn't it, Peter? Because you will lose skills, something we cannot afford to lose. Well, there are many components to this, right? It's the same on the national health insurance debate as well, and some of the issues around the provision of health care uh, and the way it's taxed and the way that's going to be spent. And that's a big point we make in the report here. Uh, this is not a one-off decision, right? We're not taking an abstract decision here on we want a basic income grant, and therefore this is how you pay for it. There's a much broader agenda coming that includes uh, comprehensive social security reform, uh, includes national health insurance, uh, and various other things. All of these things that are part of an overall uh, social wage all individually have their own spending demands and needs to be paid for. And this is the problem uh, I think we, we do really highlight in the report is that if you say want to remove uh, your medical uh, tax exemption as one way of paying for uh, a basic income grant, you then can't use that in future to pay for a national health insurance. Uh, and really we need to take a very large step back and consider all these things uh, in the round, all these different spending options, the holistic social wage, and then make some decisions around uh, around the uh, the financing of it. We, we can't just do it in isolation, uh, just on the first um, policy in front of us, which is, say, basic income grant. Um, all right. Well, thanks very much indeed. Intellidex's Peter Atabman-Taltho, thanks very much indeed for talking.